In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this beaded red dress pin so that you can wear it to raise awareness for our missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people. To find out more about symbolism of the red dress and to find more about red dress initiatives, check out the links in the description. Let's start by going through what we're going to need to do this project. The first thing that you're going to need is a beading mat. I like to use these to prevent my beads from rolling around. Some people like to put their beads in cups or bowls. I like to use a beading mat. You're also going to need a pair of sharp scissors, some beading thread, a pin, some, a needle. I'm going to be using a number 11 short needle because I like how strong they are. Um, a design, a foundation piece of felt. Uh, you can use a lot of different materials as a foundation. I like to use this stiff felt. I find it makes my pieces look really clean. I'm going to be using a black piece of stiff felt as the backing. Again, you can use a lot of different materials for the backing, such as hide um, and other natural or synthetic materials, but I'm going to be using a felt. It's perfect for a beginner project. Um, and also some beads. I'm going to be using some size 10 check seed beads for this project. We're going to be doing what's called a single needle flat stitch, um, which is basically a type of bead embroidery. So the first step in starting your piece is you're going to cut a piece of your thread, thread your needle, and make a knot at the end. So as you can see here, I have my thread on my needle. I have one end of the thread that's just hanging loose, and on the other hand, end, I have a knot. I'm going to take my design and place it on top of my foundation felt. So this part of this beadwork is just to make sure that my design isn't going to move on the backing. So working from the back, the felt side to the front, I'm going to tack down my paper pattern. So each corner, I'm just going to go up and down and tack down my corners. These are all temporary stitches. We're going to be pulling them out at the end. So don't worry about them being perfect. So once you've tacked down all four of your corners, you're going to flip your project and we're going to tie a knot. I'm going to show you what kind of knot I like to use throughout my beadwork. Um, and yeah, it's a good way to practice before you start adding beads. So I like to pass my needle under the felt and under one of the nearest stitches to where my thread is coming out of. So in this case, it would be this long stitch here. I'm going to pass my needle under the felt and, and also under the thread. So I'm not piercing my needle all the way through the felt, I'm just picking up a little bit of the felt. I'm pulling through, but not all the way. And then I'm going to take this little loop and pass my needle through it twice. So that's one, two and I'm going to pull here nice and tight. If I'm doing this when I have beads, I'm going to do that two times and in a slightly different direction. So now I'm going to poke going this way under that stitch and picking up a bit of the felt, pulling but not all the way and passing through the loop twice. So you're going to be doing that kind of knot over and over again as our project goes. And then you can go ahead and cut. So now our design is tacked down to our foundation piece. I'm going to take back the same piece of thread and put a new knot at one of the ends. Now we're ready to start adding some beads. I'm going to start my project at the base here of this straight line. I want to start as close to the edge of the line as possible. So with my knotted thread, I'm going to take my needle and poke it from the back to the front where I want my beads to start. It might take you a few times to poke it exactly where you want it. From here, you can pull your needle all the way through until that knot catches. This is where the fun begins. You're going to start by picking up four beads. So one, two, three, four. And you're going to let the beads fall where you want them to line up. I like to use my thumb to kind of guide them. And I use my needle to push them. You never want to um, stress the beads. So you never want to 
crowd them. So you don't want to push them so tight that they start to turn or lay flat. You want to let them lay naturally where they want to fall, but you can kind of guide them with your needle, make sure that the tension is right. And then with my needle, I'm going to poke from the front to the back so that these four beads are then tacked onto the project. So I'm using my design to guide me where I want that to happen. And from the front to the back, I'm tacking down these four beads. So now these four beads are held together. I'm going to poke from the back to the front and I want to poke my needle between the second and third bead that we've just added. So as you can see, my needle is coming out between the second and third bead we've added. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the way through here. And then I'm going to pass my needle through the last two beads. Just like this. That way, I'm in a position to keep adding beads. So that is the single stitch, flat stitch method. Single needle, sorry, flat stitch method. So from here, I can go ahead and pick up four new beads. I'm going to let them go all the way down my needle. Let them fall where they want to, and I can use my thumb to guide that thread. Then I'm poking my needle from the front to the back to keep those four beads in line, just like this. Tacking down those four beads. And then I'm coming up between the second and third bead that I've just added. And then passing through the last two beads. So again, you're going to be doing this type of stitch over and over and over again. But when you get to the end of the line, we're going to start a new line. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this to show you how to start a new line. Every type of corner or sharp angle, it's better to start a new line. So I'm about to put my last four beads of my line. As you can see, the four beads that I have picked up actually line up perfect with that last line. Um, in the event that only two, three, or even just one more bead fit, um, you would do the same step as if you're picking them up, lining them up, tacking them down. If you have more than one bead, you would then come in between the first and second or second and third bead to do the coming up between and then continuing. Since I have four beads, I'm just going to do as I normally would. So I'm lining them up and pulling them down where I want them to go, tacking them down, and then I'm coming up between that second and third bead and pulling through all the way. So since this is the last set of beads in my line, to finish this line, all I'm going to do is poke my needle from the front to the back. And that line is finished. Now to keep going this way, I'm going to start a new line just as I did over here. So I'm poking my needle from the back to the front and then I'm ready to pick up four beads and continue this way. I'm going to be making this line up the skirt here. The beads that I am going to line up with this belt are going to be black. And I'm going to continue the line all the way to the armpit. So this is going to be all one line for me. One thing too that I want to mention is that at the end of our project, we're going to be cutting the felt out from the project. So you want to make sure that your stitches in the back are somewhat staying within the lines. You don't want any rogue stitches very close to the edges or far away from your project because when you come to cut it you might have to cut that stitch out and all of your beadwork would unravel. Also if you come to a point in your beadwork where you're really happy with how it's looking I recommend that you tie a knot. Uh, you don't need to cut your thread but this just protects it so that if ever you make a mistake down the line and you have to cut something out you don't have to restart from the beginning. So I'm probably going to do, like I said, this line here, and then I'm going to tie a knot in this armpit and continue on with the dress, just in case I make mistakes and I need to cut my thread. So I've reached a point where picking up four beads is not going to fit to finish my line. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up two beads and see how that fits. I think that fits pretty well. I might pick up a third bead just to see. 
Yeah, I think I like the look of three beads instead. So just like I would with four beads, I'm lining them up using my thumb to guide them. I'm poking from the front to the back. And this time I'm just deciding if I want to come between the first or the second and the second or the second and third bead. I'm picking the first and second. And I'm passing through those last two beads. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this line. So I'm just going to poke from the front to the back. So now to continue the outline, we're going to have a lot of very short lines. So we're going to do like we did earlier and start a new line. And we're just going to see how many beads fit. I have a feeling it will be one or two. So for me, I think it's going to be just one bead. So in that case, I'm going to take that second one off. And I'm just going to tack that single bead down. So I'm placing it where I want it and then from the front to the back, tacking that bead. No need to go back through that bead. I'm sorry if you can hear my dogs grumble in the background. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna start a new line. So poking your needle where you want your new line to start. So for me, that's just at the edge of this last bead that I put there. I'm gonna pick up four beads. One, two, three, four. Lining them up where I want them. I'm poking from the front to the back. I'm passing between that second and third bead and then going through the last two beads. So the areas with the sleeves are definitely going to be a little bit trickier than the rest um, just because there's a lot of really short lines. So use your judgment. Um, you're going to have to use stitches with just one or two beads and that is okay. So now I'm doing a stitch with just two beads. I feel pretty confident that I can tack them down pretty well. So I'm just going to go ahead and tack those. I'm not going to come back up. So I want to protect this beadwork that I've done so far. I'm a bit worried that I might start making mistakes. So what I'm going to do, and you would do the same thing if your thread was becoming a little bit short and you wanted to start a new one, I'm going to make a knot to protect this beadwork. So similar to when we were tacking down the threads um, to tack down the pattern, I'm going to look for a stitch nearest to where my thread is coming out of. So my thread is coming out right here, and there's a stitch right here. So with my needle, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the felt and pass under that stitch. I'm pulling through, but not all the way. And then I'm passing my needle through this loop twice. So it's one, two, and then I'm pulling to make a little knot. And then I'm going to do it one more time, but in a slightly different direction. Then passing through the loop, one, two. So if your thread is getting a little bit short, this is what you would do to um, secure it, cut it, and then you would start a new line just as you would um, if you weren't going to cut it. If your thread isn't too short and you want to just protect your beadwork, you can just tie a knot and keep going. You don't need to cut your thread. Um, I like to work with the length of my hand. So if the thread is shorter than the length of my hand, that's when I'll start considering cutting it and starting a new one. But since I still have a lot of thread, I'm just going to keep going. So from here, starting a new line. And I'm going to be starting a new line at the top of the shoulder. And then at the base of the neck, I'm starting one, two, three, four new lines before I start working on the symmetry that we've already done. I am now at the middle of my line and my thread's getting a little bit short. So I'm going to show you how I tie it off in the middle of a line. So I'm going to poke my needle from the front to the back. I'm going to go ahead and make a knot. So under a stitch, picking up a bit of felt and then passing through the loop twice in the same direction. And I'm doing it again in a slightly different, from a di different angle. Passing through the loop twice, one, two. And then you can go ahead and cut. So now I'm gonna take a new piece of thread
tying my knot at one end. So one mistake that I see a lot of people making when they're starting a new thread is that they would start right where they finished right here. Where what you actually want to do so that all your beads stay connected is poke your needle from the back to the front somewhere in the middle of your line. So I'm going to pick a random spot two or three beads down from where I want to start, pass my thread through those beads, and then I'm in a position to keep beading and they're going to stay connected as if they were on the same line. So now we're ready to start filling our pin. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this um, and it's really up to you. It's whatever you prefer. Since I'm not going to be starting where I tied off my knot, I am going to cut this thread. So for this design in particular, I think it would be wise to do the belt first. So using your black beads filling in this black belt and then when it comes to the time to fill out the rest of the dress um, you have a lot of options on how you can do that so for the belt you can either do horizontal or vertical lines that's up to you for the skirt you can do horizontal vertical uh, diagonal random you can literally fill um, however you want you can use the technique that we use for the outline which is what I usually do to do straight lines um, but have fun with it be creative um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it uh, what I'm going to be doing is for the belt, I'm going to be going across with just two beads doing um, vertical lines and then for the skirt, I'm going to be following the outline and doing um, diagonal lines into the middle and then for the top, I haven't really decided yet, but stay tuned. So since I'm going to be doing my belt with vertical lines, that means I can also do my skirt in the exact same lines. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to start up here where my belt is, I'm going to start with my two black beads that fill in that skirt or that belt area and attack those down just so that they're nice and straight. And I'm coming up between the first and second bead to reinforce that tack and also to be in a position to start adding beads. So now I'm going to go ahead with my four red beads and follow along the outline all the way to the edge. So I finished filling the skirt side. Um, as you can see, the outline that I did at the bottom was straight, but because of filling, it kind of pushed it out and make it look a little bit bumpy. But I actually kind of like the way it looks. It looks a lot more like a dress that way. Um, I'm now going to start filling the top of the dress. I'm using the same technique as I did at the bottom and for the outline where I pick up four beads, tack them down, come up between the second and third bead, and then continue. But now I'm going to be doing um, horizontal lines. So instead of going this way, I'm going to be going in this direction all the way to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. So once you've finished filling your piece, you might notice that there's some sections that are a little bumpy or you might have little holes in them or you might be able to see the thread between the beads. Um, so before we cut it out, what you can do is take a fresh thread with a needle and while always being mindful of your boundaries of your beadwork, you can go from the underneath your project to the top and tack down some of the beads and the threads that might be hanging out. So what this does is that the threads that are holding the beads together, sometimes they just need to be pulled down a little bit in order for your beads to lay flat. So, um, for example, right here, I have a bead that is sticking out quite a bit, the one between my fingers here. So what I'm gonna do is from the back to the front, I'm gonna pull, I'm going to tack down the thread that's holding that bead in place. And that bead should pop right back down into place. So I'm going to do the thread on both sides of this bead. So this is the perfect time to fix any little mistakes, tack down any areas that might be a little bit more raised than the rest, and to squeeze in any beads if you have any gaps. 
Um, it's normal to have some holes. Don't worry too much about that. Um, it's better to have a hole than to crowd your beads. So if you have a hole and a bead doesn't naturally just go into the hole, I recommend you don't fill it. Um, it'll look worse with a bead in that space than if it doesn't. Once you're happy with the way your dress is looking, you can go ahead and cut out the stitches that we did at the beginning to hold down the paper. I just cut all four corners out and then I pull it out. At this point, you can also start ripping off the paper. So when you're ripping off the paper, you want to make sure you're not pulling at your stitches. So what I like to do is put my thumb relatively close to where I'm pulling, holding the beads down, and ripping the paper only a little bit at a time. So some of the paper will stay under your beadwork. You're just pulling out the excess paper. If you have tweezers, those can be very helpful at this stage too. Once your paper's all ripped out, you can go ahead and cut your beadwork off of the felt. So, or the excess felt, I should say. So you're gonna cut as close to your beadwork as you can without cutting any stitches in the back of your beadwork. So you always wanna be mindful of the work you did in the back. We're approaching finishing the pin. What we're gonna do now is you're gonna take your beadwork and align it on your backing. So making sure everything is tucked in. And you're gonna cut around the shape of your beadwork. So you want a back that is identical or slightly bigger than your beadwork. Once you have this cut out, you can put your beadwork aside and flip your backing. Then you're going to take your pin and line it up where you would like it to go. You're going to take your thread and put a knot in it and we're going to sew in this pin finding in place. So this will make sure that you want to make sure that you're sewing it enough so that it doesn't move. So using the holes in the pin finding, you can just go back and forth and sew that piece in. Once you feel that that pin is really secure and isn't going anywhere, you can go ahead and tie off your thread and cut it here. So the technique we use to sew this backing to our piece of beadwork is called edging. So to do the edge, what we're basically going to be doing is sewing these two pieces together using beads um, to finish off our piece. I always like to start with a fresh new thread um, and I make it relatively long because I much rather have too much thread when I'm doing my edge uh, than too little. So I always start with a new thread with a new knot. And now we're going to start our edge. So you line your beadwork back up on the backing. And I'm just going to trim a few little spots that I see that are kind of bothering me. 
making sure that all my threads are tucked in. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is you take your needle with your knot. I'm going to start in the middle of the skirt here because I like to end on a flat surface. So I'm going to push my backing back a little bit and I'm going to poke my needle from the between the two layers to the front. And what I want to do is sandwich this knot in between my two layers. This is the knot that I started my beadwork with, so I also want to make sure that that one's getting tucked in. So all of your threads should be tucked in between your two layers. And I want to make sure that this thread, the knot is catching there. So to begin, we pick up two beads. I'm going to poke a few millimeters away from where my thread started. So right here, and I'm pulling all the way. So from here you want to pay attention to which bead is closest to where you're working. I'm just going to wait for this to focus. There we go. So from here I want to go from the bottom of the bead to the top of the bead. That Just that last one that we added. That way when I pull this thread that bead will lay flat. Just like that. So from here, that's the first step. You pick up two beads, you go through your felt, and then all back up only that last bead. Don't worry that this first one is looking a little weird. We're gonna worry about that at the end when we come all the way back around. So from here, pick up one bead, you poke from the front to the back, just a couple millimeters away from where you, your last bead is and pulling and you're gonna go from the bottom of the bead to the top so the way you could tell which way is the bottom of the bead is that we really this loop that connects the last bead with the new bead that we're putting that's the top so the bottom would be going from underneath the bead and towards that loop that way when I pull this that loop is connecting these beads together. You can see that thread. Not twisted, just flat in between those two beads. So again, picking up one bead, going a few millimeters away, like one or two. So I guess not a few, a couple. Pulling all the way, and then passing my thread from the bottom to the top of the bead and making sure that I get that nice thread connecting my two beads together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the way around my pin. So now that I'm in the armpit, um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap right in the corner and I'm gonna put my next bead right here. So I don't know if you can see that, but my last bead was placed right here. I'm not gonna try to squeeze one into there, but when I put one in this direction, they're gonna close really nicely together. So, I'm just gonna bring this, this. So as you can see, yes, there's a little hole, but they connect really nicely together. So now you've done your edge all the way around your dress and you're coming to the end. What we're gonna do is you're gonna do one more bead as you normally would. If you have space for one and a half, um, just keep it as one bead. You don't wanna crowd it. So do your last bead as you normally would. And now what we're gonna do to finish this off is that we're gonna do the first bead that we put on on our edge as if it was our last bead. So from the top of the bead, we're gonna pass our needle through that first bead that we started with. Don't worry about making it tight right now. And then you're gonna pass your needle from the front to the back, right in front of that bead. You're gonna pull. And then from the back, go back up through that one bead, that first one that we put. And here you can pull. So you see how it kind of finishes off our edge here. So from here, we're just gonna make a couple knots and then cut our thread. So I like to go down the bead right next to the one that it's coming out of so that we have those nice bridges 
all the way around her beadwork. You're gonna pass under that thread that stitches that bead and then make the same kind of knot we've been making this whole time. So you're pulling but not all the way and then going through that loop two times. And pulling. I like to feed my needle then under a few stitches right next to that area to kind of tuck that knot in and then do that same knot under one more stitch pulling but not all the way and then going through the loop twice one two nice little knot there and then right next to this knot I'm gonna feed my needle between both the backing and the foundation piece of felt and feed it about three quarters of the length of my needle and make it come out about here. So my needle is then coming out here, so I'm piercing the backing, pulling it all the way to hide that knot we just did. You can give it a little tug, but don't pull too hard. And then you can take your scissors and cut as close to the felt as possible.